Hi guys, hope we're all doing well. Happy Sunday. Hope you've all had a good week as well. Sorry for missing out last week, but we're back. Uh, and let's have a quick look over some of the charts, how we're set up going into what is expected to be a pretty important week. Uh, I'm sure by now you've watched uh, and or read Anthony's macro menu. Uh, certainly some, some interesting days ahead, most notably Thursday with some key earnings uh, after the close on Wall Street as well. So yeah, I've, I've just seen some, some tweets suggesting the uh, the move could be expected to be in the region of sort of 3.9% uh, either way, which would be uh, pretty pretty big, to be fair. Uh, so we'll have a, a look over equity shortly. Let's, let's get started and, and have a look over at the euro, which has, has obviously been hugely benefited from this, this weaker dollar. You know, are we looking at euro strength for a weaker dollar? I would suggest it's more uh, on the dollar side of things. Um, but yeah, you can see here, this is this is... The levels that you'll see on this chart will, will have been drawn on from two Sundays uh, ago. So, you know, I like to on the Sunday just have a, a quick look over, see how my levels reacted and, and whatnot. But here we, we're sort of looking uh, officially, you know, two weeks back. But you can see that this trend line got the break, got the retest, and what an opportunity around that sort of 16th, 17th of July, then strong resistance on uh, the the 10th of March, and we find some resistance uh, just before we get to that night that smashes through and even going through some of the the next levels we, we had marked up going here to uh, 31st of Jan we're now and this is remove everything we're now at uh, and we finished on the high of the week which was key because I was speaking to the traders about you know on, on Friday if we sort of reject this whole area I think there's a another high I want to get involved just about here on that 16th of October you know, if we rejected this area, then yeah, maybe people that believe there could be a short uh, coming in soon would, would slightly get more excited. But yeah, we finished right at the top there, above this high uh, that we had marked up from January last year, and now it's almost at October 2018 levels. That's a big zone, and I think you know a lot of of, of people would welcome a bit of a pullback. Uh, to be completely honest, where where would that pullback, in my opinion, be worthy? Uh, I, I think if we can sort of use this as a guide, I mean, you've got obviously these highs here, which we can mark up for sure. But I think towards that 115, 114, you'd still be relatively happy to, to go long around there. And uh, I mean, ultimately, there's been some great opportunities along the way for pullbacks to get in. Uh, we've had, you know, and here in the futures, one, two, three, four, five, six days in a row to the upside. Uh, similar to, to what we saw here at the back end of May and it might be that we come into a bit of consolidation and we have to come back to around this area. Does that happen next week? Probably not but something worth keeping uh, a watch on that's for sure. Now above these levels 117 and beyond you're really looking at, at highs from you know, September 18 and, and this looks like a good enough point where you could find some sort of resistance before 118 comes in and if we just go back to that 118 area and this is uh, sort of here we go 118 yeah around here I mean look at this for a, a level really strong resistance again before it breaks to support we then break through and we haven't come back again since I don't think it's out of the question we get 118 uh, but that should in, in theory for me be quite a nice ceiling um, yeah I, I, all of these areas of pullback will be worth keeping a, a watch on um, but the, the bears haven't had a, a, a decent decent go of it trying to break any areas of support you can see even going back here when they do take a bit of control it just comes into another area to buy so yeah a lot of now resistance turns support below where we're trading the bears really need a new fundamental driver for this dollar to, to strengthen I would say in an ideal world uh, we come back to this kind of point 115s 114s without any new developments and that could be an opportunity to load up uh, the longs again I would say but yeah it, it, it's it's sort of done well to get through this whole level this weekly trend line so as well keep a watch on that should we should we come back in let's have a look at that weekly chart and you can see what a week it was but we're now coming into a key resistance zone are we starting to see a possibility for the tops biggest move and you are looking then towards here and we haven't had a, a close on the week above there since May 2018 uh, and you can see that would be a level where 
if you do think the dollar is going to strengthen again and we're up there, is that the chance that people would want? Uh, we'll, we'll obviously find out shortly. But uh, yeah, some really key levels there for the euro uh, to, to have a little focus on. The pound finished bang, pretty much bang on the, the high that we had in the 10th of June. I'm just going to remove everything. For me, and I, I've said this uh, for the lunchtime videos that you guys have seen on, on Amplify Live and um, you know to our traders in-house, it, it, it's a buy as long as we're above this level and the 200-day moving average. You can, of course, make money selling this market intraday, but look at this. One, two retests of this zone where the buyers just take control. And uh, now we're at a point, like with that euro, where we're hitting some key resistance. So it might be that people get a bit excited, but I'd, I'd happily not be selling even if we do come down. I'd, I'd say you're you're better off looking for a cleaner trade anyway underneath this level. And that's when you can get a, a relatively quick move down, you know, here, 150 pips. You know, obviously, if it was to go there, uh, but I think it would relatively cleanly. Let's have a quick look and see if we can start talking about some sort of trend lines in the mix. Yeah, I mean, sort of match up in there, perhaps. But yeah, now, yeah, so that's the key key level. That's the next one. Uh, above where we're trading, well, you, you've got to be careful here because you do have a couple points. Obviously, that 12th of March high is just a bit above. It's also a low from here. If we make this chart a bit, uh, bit thinner, you can see the significance of this market around this zone. So, yeah, 128.51. Could be a bit of a ceiling, couldn't it? You can see just the importance again of this point. You know, you've got support, resistance, support. Yes, a bit choppy, support, resistance. So above there, you know, next thing you know, I, 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 130 relatively quickly. And then even, could we be talking about getting back to 132s again? If the dollar's weak and we have risk on, that's going to help this uh, currency push higher. And obviously with a dollar weakness, then you know I don't think that is out of the question. But let's just mark up a couple of areas of potential horizontal resistance that uh, we could see. Getting on that 200-day moving average as well for the pound is going to be important. Uh, as with a few of these currencies, and certainly the equity market, uh, the NASDAQ, the 21-day moving average is worth having a look at uh, as well here. But you can see the significance once we broke through that, and it's still acting as support along with this area let's call it 126.70 not to be too specific uh, but yeah that's how I how I see the pound if we do come back below our, our and I'll shade this in because for me it's still the key most key level for the pound if we do come back below here you know just be aware of these previous highs as areas where you could potentially de-risk but I would say you're likely to get a, a move down towards 125s as well so the euro you can see <laughs> Key, get a lot of key resistance points ahead, uh, but the pound also bang on that. And I'd say the pound has been the easiest to trade um, over the last few weeks. It's had nice moves, hasn't really been consolidating in, in horrible ranges like that euro was for a bit, uh, whereas the pound has been moving quite nicely. But are we going to see a uh, a move lower this week? A bit of risk on could, ha could help that, but... Mm. I mean, just having a look at the weekly, you can see the importance of this level. Risk reward short from there. It's not bad, is it? It's not bad. It's not bad for any of those currencies, it seems anyway. But uh, trade what you see, not what you think. Uh, on the Aussie, you can see I had a bit of a trend line on those lows. And I remember saying I can't really justify a short unless we get below some of these levels. Previous high, by the looks of it here on the 10th of June, yes, on Friday, yesterday, Friday, uh, acts as great support. Um, so let's have a let's have a little look at this now as well. Certainly to the downside, we know we now know this is key. Along with these previous highs, I would say looking at this, the short again is similar to that uh, that pound that you probably only want to get involved if we can get below this area here because these pullbacks are still working. In terms of horizontal resistance above where we're trading, let's have a quick look. And well, I mean, it almost almost got to the levels we saw from Feb uh, and April last year. That's going to be key. That is going to be key. I remember speaking as well to guys last week just about this zone here. In that, if we can close back below there, you might start to see some selling come in. Friday moved us lower, along with actually, if you can see here, really from. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we were just drifting lower, but 
the bull stepped in on Friday. Uh, and uh, you can see we, we finished above that level. But if we can get below there, I actually don't mind the, the short too much, to be completely honest. I think de-risking down towards these points here and here for a medium-term position could be could be good. Overall, on the weekly, let's have a quick look. Um, yeah, Again, if we can come up to that point, it, it looks strong resistance, doesn't it? You can see as well, just on these areas here, it has been well respected. So... Yeah, 72, maybe a, a ceiling for now. But that said, above there, then, you know, you, you again have got decent sized moves that could happen for this market. Uh, also worth noting, it is the, uh, on, on, yeah, Friday is the last day of the month. So dollar buying into the end of the month. Maybe worth having a little think about that uh, as well. But for the Aussie at the moment, I'd say the buyers are in control unless we get below 70. Uh, the the pound below twenty six seventy four and the euro pff, be below one fifteen for me. That's not to say you can't look for shorts up at these highs on a, a sort of a range, you know, trade up here to you know get it down. But I'd, I'd say the buyers would still be looking to come in and take control, even if we do push a bit lower. Now on to to equities. I'll start with the Nasdaq. Um, look at that. Yeah. So like I said, I haven't. I haven't touched these for, for two weeks you can see we hit the bottom end of that trend line we hit the previous all-time high on the 23rd of june and uh solid support now is that this the opportunity people have been waiting for to get in again you know if we have a look at percentage of the the all-time high the double top all-time high yeah it, it went it went 6.8 percent down you know with the nasdaq is that actually good enough for a dip we've got some incredibly important earnings coming out though so uh, just bear that in mind along with the, the end of the month trading. Let's get the 21 day moving average on uh, as well. And you can see we finished below there. Now that's not the most, uh, it's not the be all and end all. It's not like, okay, I'm selling at the open. Because you can see a couple of times uh, we have finished below there, closed below. So it's, it's not a big enough close. And also you would say you would have wanted it below that uh, that high that we had previously on the 23rd of June. Uh, so to let's just remove these arrows so to the upside you know where yeah, I would say if you don't feel comfortable buying at these levels if we can get back above what was the low that we had on the 22nd of June and also the 15th uh, high I know it's a, a fair whack away but that's where I would say okay the bears aren't interested anymore uh, we're, we're currently just a bit below this area of support as well. Let's have a look at that on the 60. Um, it's probably going to get a bit messy now, but you can see here, this is that first area I want I would really want to see uh, the, the bulls get above. I would say that's safer. However, if we do, you know, get some good, good, good sort of buying pressure uh, on the open, you know, above these areas here from the 14th, 16th, 17th, you, you may well see... Uh, a decent move to sort of fill this area so yeah for the nasdaq at the moment it, it's not for me a sell yet because uh, we haven't closed below the trend line we haven't closed below the previous all-time higher and the 21 day moving average not significant enough just yet for, for for a close there if we do drift down just be aware you know the, i wouldn't say it's out of the question then to be honest that 10,000 comes in again or this low from the 29th of June, but that would be key. A break of this trend channel would, would certainly be key. So yeah, eyes on, eyes on. S&P um, 500, I mean, this hasn't been altered for two weeks. I mean, looking at that, has much really happened? You know, I, I would, I actually, I took a trade on this uh, previous high and I de-risked a tiny bit on the day. And I, I, I actually thought, you know what? We that could be the the low now, and we push on. It wasn't to be the case, and um, the, the the remainder of that trade was, was break even, stopped out. But you know, it's not the end of the world, of course. Um, but we're coming into an area now where it, it is key. You know, and it's like if the Nasdaq gets below that area that we talked about here. Now let's just get a little circle on there, just because that is massively important, isn't it? If we can get back below um, 31.83 in the S&P, these, these previous lows in the mix here where we gapped higher, uh, following that virus news, uh, vaccine news, 
then I, I would say that's pretty important. And you know, we could we could start to drift down. Let's just do this fresh uh, to the upside. Obviously, we're going to have the high of last week, but it's it's a zone. It really is a zone, and, and the gap feel that could, can come with that. Uh, if we get above there, it's all time highs, and we're not far away. You know, at yesterday's last week's high, I should say, we're only three. 3.5% away from the all-time high, incredible. Uh, but yeah, the important support points that I'd be looking at is this 3100 as well down here. You know, for me, the S&P is, I don't think we get here again anytime soon, but these would be the, the support points of interest that I think are the key lines in the sand to focus on and then obviously this whole resistance zone to the up and you know that's what that's how I would have that on um, it hasn't been moving massively I have to say it has been you know chilling out a bit 21 day relatively well respected recently that could come into play as well but now it's not panic stations for me to sell but Twitter at the moment feels as if it's going that way I have to say starting just to feel a bit bit on edge about things but it's a big week um, as well, and I have to say, did anyone watch the uh, the, the 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 Trump and uh, and Portnoy? Uh, is that his surname, Portnoy? I want to get that wrong because it was a fantastic interview. It really was uh, great. And if you haven't seen it, you know, go and watch it. Whatever your view on uh, on Donald Trump, yeah, Dave Portnoy. Um, whatever your view on Donald Trump, it was just fascinating just listening to it and and how he sort of opened up and was saying how he regrets some of his tweets all the time he thinks oh why did I say that and he was saying the retweets he sends sometimes get the ones that get him in trouble so it's, it was quite quite an interesting interview uh, so give that give that a watch but yeah he uh, the, 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 what I got from that was was you know Trump is, is his baby this stock market and uh, you know I think there's still upside left to, to come uh, for sure Dow Jones not enabled. Okay, well I need to I need to refresh my computer to get that working again. But uh, for for the gold, you can see we pushed on. We broke our resistance. We came back to su uh, find support on that level. Bit of resistance on my other area. I got marked up here before we smashed through. And nineteen nineteen point eight seems touching distance away, doesn't it? Uh, why have I got that marked up? Well, it's the high on futures, isn't it? All time high from. The 12th of September 2011. You, you, you imagine that comes now. You know, you'd be surprised if it doesn't. Uh, if you're long, you're de-risking uh, just a bit before there, of course, taking a bit of your trade off. But uh, yeah, strong move. Strong move for, for gold. Um, daily, where's your pullback point if you if you don't want to FOMO long it? Uh, maybe even that back down towards here, unfortunately. I mean, you could obviously... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a fair whack away, isn't it? A fair whack away. It's going a bit vertical now, where it can be a bit tricky to, to get on these loose ends. But, uh, you know, if you're not in, you know, take take care. Uh, take your time. There's other markets, isn't there? But yeah, yeah it's, it's it's a buyer's market uh, at the moment. But, you know, the, the lesson being, you know, as long as we stay above here, I'd, I'd be comfortable but still being long or looking for longs. Oil. Uh, it, it did get that uh, that fill the, and the close above. We retest it, find support. Not, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Looking at that, you, you're happy to be to be bullish this market still, I would say. And you know what was quite interesting was the the sort of you know these new trend lines that are appearing, and we haven't had a, a significant close below. Uh, so yeah, it's it's at a key line in the sand, isn't it? I, I think. If you're you, you don't want to be long oil over the weekend as we know from this year, um, but see how it unfolds this week or this this evening and, and uh, uh, upon the futures open the market open because I don't think it's a bad long here as long as we stay above the trend line below there I think you can get you can start to get a move back down towards thirty thirty nine bucks and and then thirty seven for sure if we hold then you've obviously got the highs from from last week and. And then this area uh, where we're talking 43, 44, 45 bucks as well. So, yeah, some 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 key levels in there. Silver went vertical. You can see here. Um, it's, it's not even on my screen. It went that high. Wowza. 
Wow, wow, wow. Um, and this is a weekly chart. What a week for silver. Yeah, I mean, it, it struggled, didn't it? You know, you can see we're sort of saying, and remember being, you still happen to be long above this area. Uh, don't quite know why I've highlighted that point, really. Can't remember, I've watched the video back. But yeah, this area, you can see once we got above that and the and the high from the year, it, uh, it let off and, and it really did push and push and push. I mean, you, you, you can imagine people start thinking about this area coming into play uh, around $26, to be honest. And obviously it has a little week like it did last week, you get that. Um, uh, I'm not gonna you know, jump in and say, you know, it, it comes crashing down here, but you'd, you'd expect, you'd expect a bit of a move uh, to, to control the speed of this. The, the margin has increased as well. And you'll remember, was it 2011? It was 2011, wasn't it? For, for gold, and they increased the margin. And that actually, I believe, marked the top, pretty much, when they increased the, the margin. Was it 2011? It was, wasn't it? Someone in the comments has confirmed that. I mean, I'll, I'll check in a moment, but it was, this is where the gold margins were increased. You can see it became lower. So for silver, it wasn't meaningful. It wasn't massively uh, that the margins to hold a contract were increased, but you know, when that happens, it might lead to a bit of a move down. So just bear that in mind. Just bear that in mind. The DAX, um, yeah, I mean, again, it would be, I didn't get long the DAX, but I'd have been happy to, to hear, thinking, you know, yes, you, you would have de risked at this moment here. And to be fair, you know, when it doesn't close above their three days in a row, you. You start moving your stops to, to, to sort of scratch and it, it comes back there now and to be honest it did find support on those lows so again how it finished on on the week you're, you're not it's not panic stations yet it's not um it's set up quite nicely let's just refresh this because it, technically this market is actually i think behaved quite nicely so you'd have these lows in here from the 15th of july marks up a good area of support if that doesn't hold then you're looking uh towards the low of the 3rd of July, we haven't had a close below there. Uh, and then really I would say you're, you're sort of looking to these areas here as well. So some nice support points to come in uh, if if we are to, to move lower. Trend line break, it's steep, it's on the day, it's key, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's enough to make me want to sell just yet. I'm happy to be wrong on that, of course, but. Uh, and then to the upside, the highs that we had, no close above there will be key. Obviously, then the high of last week, gap fill, and then the high. Simple. You know, those would be the levels I'd have on. Trade what you see, not what you, you think. Um, looking at the 60 minute, obviously, the, the trend line break was, was well respected enough. You know, if we can get back above the trend line and these lows, then yeah, fine. Maybe that's where you would want to get long rather than down here. But uh, yeah, some, some key points, some key points in there. Uh, anyway, guys, we'll, we'll wrap it there. Hope you all enjoyed that. Um, and any questions, get them in the, the comments below. But uh, I look forward to doing this again next week. And I hope you'll have a great week ahead.